to our, our speaker tonight, um, to a friend of mine and a uh, longtime colleague, he's the mayor of Rancho Mirage, and um, I'm just going to let you take the floor and, or actually take your seat and just... Yeah, I'll, I'll take my seat and uh, uh, <clears throat> be a little more, a little less formal. I also am a uh, friend of the uh, CV Link. I have been for three years. Uh, let me just tell you a very quick snapshot of me. Um, I lived in LA all my life. I was born in Los Angeles. I went to all the public schools in Los Angeles. I went to law school at USC, graduated in 1963. I've been practicing law since 1964. I have been identified in a nationwide book called Best Lawyers in America for the last 29 years consecutive each year. You can't get in there by buying ads. You have to be voted in there by your uh, colleagues. Um, I have uh, tried uh, close to 100 cases, one of which uh, I tried in Los Angeles Superior Court, ended up arguing uh, before the United States Supreme Court, uh, reversed the California Supreme Court, which took a verdict away from my client, setting national law in that Supreme Court decision. Uh, my wife and I moved down here in, uh, well, we bought a home down here, thinking we were going to, like many people, thinking we were going to go back and forth forever for something about the magnetism of the uh, desert. Um, it grabbed us. So we bought in 93 and we started, well, was, my partner in LA kept saying to me, Dana, uh, are you uh, planning on getting back up here? All he, he and I tried cases for other lawyers. So if we weren't in trial, we didn't really have to be in LA. So, but at any rate, time evolved and I took up golf. I got my handicap down to a nine, realized I was never going to uh, uh, hit the senior tour. So um, then got a little bored, told my wife, I thought I was gonna have to go back to LA and go back to making money and doing that sort of thing, crass as that may sound. And, um, about that time, somebody said, uh, why don't you consider running for Ranch Mirage City Council? Uh, I did consider it and told my wife, I said, well, if I get elected, that'll be the arm of the last journey of uh, these two legs. And if I don't, I'll go back to practicing law, which I enjoyed very much. And I got elected, and uh, that was in 2002. I've been elected ever since, uh, four times all total. And uh, we rotate the mayor in Rancho Mirage, unlike Cathedral City. And every city council member gets an opportunity to be mayor. This is my fourth uh, term as mayor. So that's kind of my background. And I gave you that a little bit because of the issues that we confront, uh, most of which you don't know unless you've been really attentive to what's been going on in the last three months, uh, about the CV link. I will tell you this, that I have no ax to grind. I have no income uh, that's in any manner dependent on any aspect of CV Link, whether it gets here or doesn't get here, or whether it's modified or isn't modified. I'm here because an issue came up on March 30th of this year, and that issue is what has been driving me. Before I tell you how all this started, with that issue and what that issue is, let me also say that Rancho Mirage has taken the position that we will not s permit CV Link to come through Rancho Mirage until two things occur. One, that we have a route that is acceptable to our residents. And in that context, uh, it is significantly night and day different from Cathedral City. Uh, the city manager and I drove down, uh, followed the proposed CV link in Cathedral City and in Palm Springs. Not a single residential community is disturbed in the slightest way. You have plenty of space. It's along the, the Whitewater Channel. Uh, and it's got a flat surface up at the top of it for the most part. Nobody is displaced. Nobody has danger or difficulty entering or exiting their homes because of the CV link. 
The routes that were provided to us, and by the way, when they first started being provided to us, I thought, and everybody else I think thought, they were entitled to pick the routes that they wanted. They never came to Rancho Mirage and said, how do you feel about us taking this route? Or how do you feel about us taking that route? They told us that we would be taking this route. And it was going to go through the golf course at Rancho Las Palmas. The people in Rancho Las Palmas were shocked. And they fled to us saying, what can be done? That was the first we heard about it, and that was less than a year ago. Shortly after that, there was a meeting in which uh, Tom Kirk, the executive director of CVAG, uh, Coachella Valley Association of Governments, each city has a delegate there plus the county, so there are 10, 11 counting Blythe. The uh, executive director came to Rancho Mirage, stood before the council, told us what they were doing, as though they had every right to do it. By then, I had just heard about the uh, Rancho Las Palmas problem. I asked the executive director, does CV Link have the power of eminent domain? And in a disturbing, nasty, in my view, probably not perceived by anybody but me that way, he says, yes, we do. And I thought, boy. That's dangerous. And that meeting was over. I asked the, the uh, city manager to get for me the joint powers agreement whereby all of the cities collectively created the CV link, uh, created CVAC, Coachella Valley Association of Governments. They're the ones behind CV link. Totally them. Totally the leadership of them. I asked him to not only get me the uh, Joint Powers Agreement, I said, but to get me any addenda that came with it uh, that would be related to it. So I got all of the documents. And indeed, it said, CVAG has the power of eminent domain. However, there was another clause in another section that says, that power of eminent domain is limited. You, they do not have the power of eminent domain over the objection of a majority of the city council in which eminent domain is being applied, which means they didn't have authority over us. Nobody knew it. And I mean nobody knew it. I contacted city council members from around the valley. Not one person understood that. They all thought they had the power of eminent domain, and therefore whatever they picked, we were stuck with. Not the case, and I communicated that. So staying with the route issue, they offered other suggestions. It was down Highway 111, down Bob Hope Drive, our business communities, our best residential areas, uh, enter and exit off of these streets to get into, to, to go past the river, past uh, Omni Hotel, used to be Rancho Los Palmas Hotel, going up there to 111, up Bob Hope. I mean, that would so disrupt our business community that it would be impossible for me to describe because I'd be speculating, but I just know that it would be bad. We're talking about not a bike path. We're talking about 30 feet wide. 30 feet wide is the, is the width of the CV link, except where there are situations where physical problems prevent it or where safety considerations might interfere with it. And then it can be reduced down a little bit. But for the most part, it's 30 feet wide. I have a book here could show you the page. Trust me, I wouldn't lie to you because one of you might say, show me the page. Uh, and if you do, I'll show you the page. 30 feet wide. So we have been wrestling with them like mad. In the last executive council meeting about three weeks ago, they told us that the new route that they have chosen, not one person asking the city of Rancho Mirage, can you work with us on this? What do you think about it? They chose it. They announced it at the executive meeting. We didn't know about it until we'd read it in our staff reports. They picked Gerald Ford Drive. Well, an interesting aside occurred. As we talked about other matters having to do with route selection, 
uh, Mayor Henry said to me, he's also a member of the executive committee, he said to me, he said, well, Dana, he says, thanks a lot. You, uh, he says, I live on or near uh, Gerald Ford Drive, and uh, thanks for considering my interests. And I said, Stan, uh-uh, we didn't pick Gerald Ford. It's they who picked Gerald Ford. The CV Link, CVAG, Tom Kirk, that group. They are the ones that said it's going to come down uh, Gerald Ford. Well, we have a lot of residential communities that enter and exit. We have the golf, Mission Hills Golf Course. We have that square mile across, you know, we're pavilions, not pavilions anymore, unfortunately. But, you know, the square mile of empty land that's just across, that is probably the single most valuable piece of property remaining undeveloped in the valley. The total value of that square mile. Nothing on it. And they want to have the CV link going down either that side or the other side where there are more residential uh, issues. So that's on our agenda for Thursday of this week. And it'll be rec it's recommended to prohibit them and I'm confident it'll pass because our council members have been very disturbed by about the treatment that we have received. Skipping all of that, I did give them at that meeting two routes that they could consider. One, Ramon Road, possibly, and two, going down to the north end, down to the railroad tracks and coming around the backside of Rancho Mirage where residential communities do not exist and they'll never enter from that side, from the north side of the property. So whether that flies with them or not, I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. But we have tried to be at least cooperative. Our position has been we do not oppose the CD link. We insist on two things, a route through our city that we can live with and the financial issues that I'll now talk about. Three years ago, CV Link was more or less conceived. It was going to be, at that time, it was going to be a bike path, a pedestrian path, a jogger's path when it first started. It wasn't called CV Link at that time. It was 1E111. E uh, at that time, they discovered that they weren't raising the funds to build the project through grants from other organizations. So somebody got the idea. Never, none of this ever floated to the city councils. Only the one member you have there is the one that learned anything. And most of the time, that doesn't get communicated to city councils because nobody realizes the importance of things, the significance of things, you know, whatever the issues are. George, you know what I'm talking about, and I know that uh, Greg does as well. So. When they couldn't get the money from the normal sources that they anticipated, somebody got the idea that if we add motor vehicles to it, that is low speed electrical vehicles, they're called LSEVs, sometimes they're called NEVs, meaning neighborhood electrical vehicles. These vehicles are not built to exceed 30 miles per hour. They can be modified but they're not supposed to be without making people aware of that. So they said if we put, if we added to whatever the width was then, we added to it enough to allow motor vehicles, electric vehicles going back and forth, then maybe we can qualify for road funds. So that then became the approach. And then they, they contacted the Caltrans, they eventually got a grant it's just now going through, not completed yet, a grant from Caltrans of $10 million. I think they got a $10 million uh, grant from the uh, federal government. One of the hospital, one of the hospitals gave them 7 or $8 million. Anyway, they have raised approximately $55 million through grants. They, they project that this CV link will cost $100 million started off, their initial projections were 50 million, went to 70 million, it's now up to 100 million. That they, that's what it's going to take to construct this thing. And you begin to wonder on the issue of how much do you like the idea of CV Link, is what would 100 million dollars do for our valley? Could it be of greater importance and greater significance 
if put to other uses in our valley. That's an issue that stays under the table. Nobody's talking about it much because nobody wants to come out right against CV Link and be labeled as I am daily by uh, inundated emails by the bicycle community uh, how I'm against sports. I got one today. You're just you're just a, a, an old man who doesn't have any interest in sports. You can't get modern. I email that SOB back. And I said, let me tell you something. I've played every sport there is except for high line and cricket. I'm a, I'll beat you in ping pong today. I'll throw a football with you today. I've played all sports. I go to the gym five days a week for a minimum of an hour. So don't give me this crap about age. And by the way, it's kind of discriminatory, isn't it, to talk about age as being a factor. Anyway, I kind of enjoy that sort of thing. It kind of <laughs> keeps my blood uh, percolating and all that. So at any rate, they've now changed it. It gets no notice. Our city never heard the word one about there being a, now a motor vehicle. When I say motor, I mean electric. Right? An electric vehicle component to it. And I supported it. I told John Benoit uh, two and a half years ago, I guess. I said, yeah, I support it, John. It sounds like a good idea. I didn't know anything about it. I was kissing rear end a little bit. Uh, you know, the supervisor is important to the cities. And uh, so, yeah, okay, I didn't see any harm to it. Nobody said anything about money. So it goes on until this past March 30th. You didn't read anything about it. I didn't read anything about it. Nobody knew what was going on, how it was progressing, anything about it. Except we did know one thing. Because word, not that we read this at the time, I didn't, but word was going around that the cost of it was going to be handled by grants from outside, then the ongoing operations and maintenance of the CV link 50 miles of all of this stuff with components if you've not seen the pictures I mean like subways running above ground in parts uh, it's an ideal thing if it were appropriately planned and had the money to support it you'd say gee that looks beautiful and it does but March 30th oh I was telling you this is these are documents. This first document is, I'll start with the back document. Let's start with the middle one. This is from the August 2014 draft master plan. The draft master plan of the CV link. And right here, highlighted on that document, you can go to the internet, just Google CV link or CVAG CV link. They're all there, the web, the pages are there. It says, operations and maintenance will not require local funding. Okay, as long as that's the case, go ahead and build it. In the, in June of that year, 2014, a press release or an interview by the, by the uh, newspaper reporter and the, um, PR guy for a CV link. Right down here, this is a first class facility that's going to require a first class maintenance plan, he said, adding that it won't mean pulling money away from city budgets. <clears throat> okay, all's well. It's not going to hurt the city, so nobody's concerned about it. CVAG is off doing its thing. Then, in March of this year, Three months ago, three months ago, the final master plan is published. And that's this document. The one before it is about the same thick, thickness. But this document also, executive summary operations and maintenance, right here. Operations and maintenance will not require local funding. When was that, did I say? Oh, three months ago. On March 30th, 
the day like December 7th rings in my mind. I do remember December 7th as a kid. March 30th, Tom Kirk, the executive director, came to the Rancho Mirage to City Hall and met with one other council member and me and our uh, city, uh, city manager and one other member of staff, four of us in this room. And Tom Kirk very soon and quickly says, our plan for funding the operations and maintenance, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you, how much is operations and maintenance? Both in the draft plan and in this plan, the final plan. Operations and maintenance, $1,616,900. So let's say $1.6 million per year to operate and maintain this thing. Oh my goodness, who's going to pay for this over the decades that that CD link is there? We never heard these numbers, but we didn't care even if we had because we were told city funds will never be touched for paying it. Don't worry. So he says, here's my plan for funding the $1.6 million. We will take, the cities will sign a document saying that they will get from each of the cities the following. They will take 8% of the increase in bed tax, TOT, transient occupancy tax. They'll take 8% of our TOT income in every year throughout the future. 8% of the difference between what we get in this year and this year and this year, the difference between those figures and the base year, as it's called, 2016. So 2016 is the base year. Let's assume that we get the Rancho Mirage got $7 million in TOT in 2016. In 2017, if we got 7,500, we would have to give them 8% of the increase over the original base year. So 8% of 500,000 they would get. If we got a million, it'd be 8% of a million. And the next year, they still take 8% of the difference between what we get this year and what we got in 2016. So 20 years from now, well, I can tell you what it figured out to be. I asked our finance director. I said, how much is that formula going to cost us in 10 years? He gave me the first nine years figure. The ninth year, Rancho Mirage would be paying $313,000 of maintenance toward the CV link. Cathedral City, not having the TOT that we receive, would have to pay something. But even that would be a, a hit on the, on the burden of any city that's having economic difficulties. In Cathedral City is in that category, Coachella is in that category, Desert Hot Springs is in that category, and even Indio to some extent is in that category. And although she is a total believer in CV Link, the mayor of La Quinta, totally for it, hates me now. She used to be friends, but this changed that. She hates me, and their city is trying to pass a one, one cent sales tax increase so they can pay their bills. And she's not worried about that much. Well, Tom Kirk says, wait a second, Hobart and uh, Rancho Mirage, your figure 313, that's not what our figure is. Our figure is 250,000. Now, if that, were, if that were the final thing, that would be about as unacceptable as 313,000 in, 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 at the end of nine years. But they had gotten their numbers from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And the numbers they got from them did not include any income coming to the city from the Ritz. The Ritz went back in business. So when you put the Ritz money back into it, their calculation of 250,000 is off. It had to be 313,000. So, and that's just that year and going up. So when he explained that at this meeting of the four of us, I flipped my wig. 
I won't even quote myself in mixed company. But I said words to the effect, what makes you think you can come to the cities and take that kind of money from us that we're, we'd be willing to pay? The whole umbrella of that is about 92 or 5 percent of the entire cost of the CV link would have been covered by five cities. The five cities that live off of TOT. We don't have property tax. You guys do have property tax. You get income from property tax. We, we get a sliver, but it's nothing. Our, our income, our city lives off of sales tax and TOT. So for us to lose that kind of money would be a disaster for us. So when I learned all of this, I immediately put on our next calendar agenda that the city of Rancho Mirage, uh, my motion was that we oppose this TOT, this 8% TOT plan. And as soon as it was passed at the meeting, I immediately telephoned the newspaper because nobody in the valley knew this story. And I knew the only way to get it out was give them a good story and hopefully they get it on the front page. It was five o'clock, quarter to five when I called him. And I talked to this reporter, Barrett Newkirk. And he said, well, again, it sounds like an interesting story. I'll see what I, I said, let me tell you, Barrett, talk to your big shots. This is a giant story. And it deserves front page as well as kind of late in the day to be changing it. I said, okay, but talk to him at least. Next day on the front page of the Desert Sun, Rancho Mirage vetoes this 8% TOT plan. Headlines. Not headlines, front page. Well, everybody in the valley, every city council in the valley had somebody who saw that. And all of a sudden, people woke up to what was going on. And now I think that there are at least four cities at the last meeting we had. Uh, actually, we had one motion that passed. Cathedral City uh, made a motion and Stan Henry made a motion that was one of the four motions that Rancho Mirage had on our had on the agenda, and that is the motion that we wanted, which was to disperse the financial data to all of the city councils, give them them and their finance directors and city attorneys and whoever time to review the material, to get it, try to get a handle on what the operations and maintenance annual expense is likely to be. Keep in mind, their experts who worked on this for now three years, they say it starts at 1.6 million. I asked our finance director, I said, calculate when 1.6 million becomes 200,000, 200 million dollars. The reason I did that was because I had made a random comment that I hadn't thought through when I was saying, arguing something, I said, it's going to cost million, hundreds of millions of dollars over the decades, is what I had said. And even when I said I said, you know, Dana, don't be exaggerating anything. You know it, but I had already said it. <laughs> I wish that guy had stood up before my mouth opened. And they did. They peppered me with that. Look, he always exaggerating. So I was curious. Hundreds, not a hundred million, I said hundreds, plural. So I sent an email to our finance director and I said, start with 1.6 million and I think you should increase it annually by some inflationary factor. You pick it, the, whatever you think is conservative, because I don't want to be part of that. I want you to tell me, when do we hit $200 million of valley money going into this project? Answer, 63 years, six decades and three years it hits the 200 million. I asked him, when is 300 million cut in? He said, I didn't calculate it. I said, you have an estimate. He said, well, I'd say about 20 more years. 300 million. Now your question is, over the coming decades, is that where we want this money put? On CV Link? We can build, Ranch Mirage has got 55 miles of bike trails uh, in our city. You guys have got bike trails in your city. Uh, we can create bike trails for a whole lot less than we're doing this. Anyway, that was neither here nor there. So we now know what the price is. The last thing that I want to mention to you 
there's a ton of things I'd love to mention to you because some it, they're so irritating. But I will skip that for just staying with the facts, ma'am. Yes, I dr dragnet those of you who well, thank you for nodding. Some of you, like, you dragnet. What's that? It's something that fishermen they don't, use. They don't know. I know. I know. Yeah. Wouldn't you love to be a beautiful or handsome young person, 27 years old? Oh wow! But you have to know then what we know now. That's part of the deal. Uh, otherwise, it's, I don't think many of us want to take that trip all over again. Uh, anyway, here's the other part. Here's the other part. They say. And this I do want to read to you because I don't want you to have to rely on my memory. I'm reading from page uh, 155 of the final master plan, the March 2015 master plan. What it says right here, I have it underlined. I'll just read it. Measure A sales tax revenues. You've heard the term Measure A, probably don't know exactly what it is, but I'll tell you. Measure A sales tax revenues could fund over 40% of the CV Link operations and maintenance budget. So they're saying, hey cities, don't worry about it. We'll use Measure A funds to pay for over 40% of the budget. Major A funds are this, and the person who should be talking to you about this is really Greg Pettis, because he is one of the true experts uh, in this transportation field, somebody I rely on regularly uh, for input and explanation. But Major A funds are this. Back in 1998 or right around there, the voters of the Riverside County had a major on the ballot that if they raised the sales tax in the county by one half cent, that money would be dispersed to the various communities. They had formulas for it. Coachella Valley is one of the communities. Western Riverside County is another. And then there's a third one out somewhere. That the monies will, would be used to repair the dilapidated roads of the valley. In 2002, that was about to expire. In 2002, the Measure A bill that was on the ballot, that we all voted for or against, passed with about 69% of the vote, was to continue this half penny sales tax for road repair and thus and thus. Now there is a legal argument that they are now circulating by in-house counsel. Counsel for RCTC, same law firm for uh, Palm Desert. They are saying, well, there is an interpretation of Measure A funds that could allow us to use that money for a new project. We'll call it like a new corridor, like it's going to take some of the burden off of Highway 111. Now, what is the burden? I mean, that's the main thing, is taking the burden off of Highway 111. Well, maybe some bicyclists that don't have a particular destination, maybe they would take CV Link if they're just out for a nice ride. And I could imagine bicyclists would enjoy it tremendously. Pedestrians? I don't think it's going to take pedestrians off of Highway 111. Most of that is shopping and business and stuff. It's further to get to CV Link than it is to get and pull up your car near your business establishment. But they make a point that they, they say the low-speed electric vehicles, they'll come off of Highway 111 and it will reduce traffic congestion that way. Well, that would be fine, except for one thing. It's illegal for low-speed electric vehicles to be on Highway 111 or any other highway that has a speed limit in excess of 35 miles per hour. But the big move right now is to drain, it's my word, to use would be theirs, 
to use Measure A monies that were dedicated and voted on by all of us for one purpose and one purpose only. And let me tell you how I can establish for you clearly the one, that one purpose. This is the ordinance that we passed in 2002. This is the preamble. Look up the word preamble sometime. A preamble is an explanation or a statement of what is to come, what is intended to follow. This is what the preamble says on how the Measure A funds are to be used. And you answer to yourself, tell me where to take a flying leap. If you think I'm wrong, say, you know, I don't agree with you on that. Quote, the transportation system in Riverside County is rapidly deteriorating, and our population and economy are growing rapidly. Maintenance and repairs of existing roadways and improvements to relieve congestion cannot be accomplished with available funds. Without additional funds, the system will bog down and pavement will crumble into permanent disrepair. State highway funds are inadequate and competition for funds is increasing. Skip a paragraph. Local governments must either generate revenues to expand our system and maintain our investments or watch the system collapse and endanger the health, welfare, and safety of Rancho Mirage residents. It doesn't say word one anywhere in here about building new corridors. Let me just conclude by showing you there is an exhibit A to this, a Riverside County Transportation Improvement Plan. That's part of the ordinance. It's broken into three sections primarily, one of which is Coachella Valley. Western uh, is one of the other. Western County is one of the other. In, in the uh, Western, should, here we go. In Western Riverside County, as you can see here, we're now here. It talks about putting money into state highways. It talks about huh, development of new transportation corridors. Yeah. But wait a second, CV Link is not in Western Riverside County. It's in Eastern Riverside County. It's in the Coachella section. So, oh, well, okay, well, it's probably there too. It's here. So you go to the Coachella section. Here we go, Coachella Valley area. Talks here about the things to do, but nothing talks about new corridors. So the lawyers are interpreting this document to say, well, we could have a new corridor called a CV link. How can you can interpret a document that specifically designates those corridors in one section and doesn't designate them in the section that we're talking about? It's a thin legal argument. At any rate, I've exhausted you all. Uh, it's become my, uh, my subject du jour. I just want to know who are the geniuses behind this. Well, what are the, the names? I want to know names. <laughs> well, the, the two biggest names are Tom Kirk, the executive director, and they tell me, uh, well, I know for a fact, Supervisor Benoit is behind it. And I have apologized to John. Who, uh, John had appointed, there's a position that supervisors appoint two people to. They are people who in the case, in the event the supervisor is di disabled, lost, can't be found in a horrible type of situation, this person steps in, one of these two people steps in to become temporary supervisor. Some years ago, a few years ago, not, not that long, John asked me if I would take that appointment for him. He said he was appointing me and Terry Henderson. I said, who's number one, who's number two? He says, you're number one. So if I'm incapacitated, 
they'll call on you. I said, I'm glad to do it. I said, I, I respect that uh, very much, uh, that you think that much of me. And I've told John recently, tell him every time I see him now, breaks my heart that I'm opposing something that he's for. But I have an obligation to Rancho Mirage residents that they are not going to be saddled with a debt of unimaginable proportions without us knowing in advance what it's going to be. So yes, you had a question. I, I did. I have sat through the CB Link presentation by, I call him Tim all the time, by mistake, oh, like but it's so. Tom. At Stan Henry's thing, at Rotary, at City Council, and you're very demonized. You, your name isn't used, but the rancho, it's, it's a demonization. It's very well, big time, big time. It's very childish, if I may say that. Because hearing you gives me what I think they owe me. If they are going, you understand. I've challenged Tom Kirk to a debate. I'm new to this thing. I mean, this started for me on March 30th. He's been on it for three years. He won't meet me anywhere. I have a question beyond all that. And he can't answer this question because he's got a wonderful slick presentation with little Cindy right And television commercials, by the way, they took off the TV commercials, I think. Nobody's told me about them lately because I was saying we're spending money on TV commercials on something coming three years later. What a waste of money. But, so the question is, this, the CV link is supposed to go to the salt and sea, and it's 30 years in the making. But if we don't have somebody wake up and do something about the salt and sea, we a bigger problem. And when I bring that up, it's kind of like, uh, you know. And don't annoy us with that reality. And I'm sorry, it's just that I, I don't get anyone answering that part of the question. Well, I'm it's not a big question. ICB link. It would be great to have a green machine, whatever. But the true problem we're facing is we are going to lose our property values. We're going to lose the CB link. If something isn't done about the salt and sea. And nobody wants to talk about it. But you know, that's amazing. We have right. so many big, big, big problems, and yet so much. Time, money, effort is spent on something like that. I don't get it. Well, you, I, if you don't mind, no. what we seem to forget, because unfortunately we're not getting a balance here. We don't get it from, from Tom. We're not getting it from you. We really need to have an objective view here. What we're getting is a level of demonizing that you've been through, and you're doing it back. There isn't a sense of balance here. You're a lawyer. You take one side, and he takes the other. Unfortunately, I think since you were in favor of it at one time, and you have a right to certainly research it, I think you need to have all the facts on the table. Well, I'm the only one bringing out the I facts. I understand that. I'm the you, only one. Except that you didn't mention about a, a group that was uh, interested in maintaining that. The, there what was are you a talking group about? that's maintaining the entire, what is it? Golden the Golden Voice. You haven't mentioned that at all. Well, I, I could have mentioned that, and I'll be glad to talk yeah, about that. that. Okay. Golden Voice. At our last Coachella, meeting, on, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm assuming festival. everybody knows who Golden Voice is. On our June 1 meeting of the, C, of, uh, the Executive Committee, we had these motions on the calendar. On that, on that day, same date, June 1, there's a letter from Skip Page to Dear Tom. And in it, he says, uh, speaking of Golden Voice, he said, we let this letter serve to indicate that we have an interest in uh, looking at uh, there we think there may be ways to monetize the CV link where we could pay a hundred percent of the uh, of the um, ongoing o O&M operations and maintenance and in a uh, in a uh, message from the mayor to our residents that came out just today I talk about that the only reason I didn't talk about it now is because there's other subjects I didn't talk about. That was a statement that we've heard nothing further about. Whether something comes, and as I said, in, if you can get a hold of my message, uh, somebody can email it to you or send me an email and I'll email it to you. I, I have it. You have it. it. And if you read it, you saw that I talked about the Golden Boys thing. The only cautionary thing, I, and I said, we will expo explore that, and we absolutely should. If that turned out to be a solution, then there's no problem. 
But let me tell you how, how improbable that is. To be a solution for your city, my city, anybody's city, you've got to talk about a plan that covers a sizable number of years, where if Rancho Mirage is going to be immunized from debt, having anything to do with the O&M, because Golden Voice is taking it over, it can't just be a signed document. It's got to have guarantees and bonds behind it that guarantees the city that in the event Golden Voice goes under or does what sells out or whatever happens, if they abdicate that responsibility, we have to know that we don't have to fill those shoes. That's why it has to be bonded in such a way as to ensure that. If we can get that kind of security, I'm all in favor of it. I'm back in favor of it because it's not a cost. It's as long as it's not an inconvenience to our residents and we can find a path where it isn't an inconvenience. So I'm not opposed to what Golden Voice is talking about, but you know, I've been a lawyer for since 1964. I have settled thousands of legal matters. And there's a long way from the lip to the payout. And most of those things collapse. Eventually something gets put together, but nothing of this magnitude, this is an incredible magnitude. I wouldn't oppose anything except inadequate financial backing for it. And, and I have said that many times. We just can't, the one thing that I'm concerned about on the Golden Voice thing, and I mentioned it in this email, today's email, is we can't let that carrot that's dangled in front of us allow a whole lot of time to pass. We have spent about two to three million dollars on CD Link thus far. For this coming year, starting July 1, a couple of weeks, starting July 1, they are budgeting for the next fiscal year just under five and a half million dollars. Now, and, and that's just for con mainly consultants. After that, at some point, design, construction starts to get into it. And we, will, we could end up, I'm concerned that we might end up, having a CV link drag out to the point where it continues to be built without solution to the operations and maintenance issue. So that it comes to a point where all of a sudden you've got this thing in your backyard, not literally, but you have it in your city, crossing through your city, and nobody has a plan or the put up the money to finance it. And if people walked away from it, and people do in the valley, you know where Roy's homeless shelter is? Yes. It's across uh, the freeway. In, in, yeah. When, when Roy started, many of the cities, most all of the cities, committed $103,000 uh, $103, a year to pay for it. Within four or five years, within four or five years, there were only three cities paying it. All the rest had either cut down. Cathedral City was one that had to cut down, but they continued to meet that obligation as best they could. Other cities, Indian Wells, for example, zero. A lot of cities, zeros. As a matter of fact, there's a quote that I use in something somewhere. A member of the city council of uh, Indian Wells at the time, when they, after saying this year we're going to give nothing, even though we made that commitment, and the quote in the paper was, well, a commitment to make those funds available isn't a guarantee. And that's, that kind of resonates in my mind a little bit. We have to have guarantees for the long-term solution. Otherwise, we're going to have this rail, this, it, this land covered with the CV link, and who's going to maintain it? Do we let it just deteriorate in front of our eyes? Or do, do the cities then get stuck with what they didn't think that they would be stuck with? My fear, yeah. is, my fear that in this situation is that we're going to let such an opportunity pass because we are older. The, I don't know what the average age is in Rancho Mirage, but here it's, what, 36 years old. 36 years What's that old? got to do with and anything? What it's got to do with is that we're making decisions for the future generation, and when we're dead, they'll be left with nothing.
because we didn't have the vision. They'll but be left the with vision. the debt, or they'll be left with no debt. I, 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 and, and part of this is to continue the conversation mm -hmm. as you can see this is a very intriguing. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. Tom, Tom came to a Community Associations Institute business expo three years ago and presented the, the vision and the link. And the feeling of those people that attended was, A, they were not addressing the fact that the Salton Sea was, what do you do when, it, when it's smelling and you're going? Who's going to want to go around there when it smells? And number two, the, the budget. That, and at that time, they were um, trying to get uh, funding and stuff and all these other things. People were not particularly in favor of spending that kind of money because they had no idea how many people would be actually using it to make it that worthwhile to spend that much money. And that was three years ago. All right. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Okay. Next thank week, you. we're doing goal setting and, and planning for the, mm -hmm. for the next year. Is a real issue? Thank you. This More than real. You can see. I can't